Vanguard dividend growth. That scare you. Versus Wellington versus S and P 500. Sorry, buddy. Uh, this is an update from an article I did like four years ago, and I want to go into this. This is fun. Um, so check this out. So about four years ago, I had written an article, a blog post, and I think I put I can't remember, but I did a video on it, and I I think I posted it. We're looking at Vanguard dividend growth versus Vanguard Wellington versus S and P 500. And I'll I'll link this to the show notes. And again, if you go on here and you see Macy's ads. By all means, click on them. That gives me my Google AdSense. All right, so we're going to update this. So basically, what I, I let's just go with this. The news that Vanguard reopened its uh, di uh, dividend growth fund, which was back at what, 2018, uh, at something like that. Actually, let's see what this was, when this was from. Hold on a second. Well, I guess that... Uh, Oh, Vanguard Environmental Fund now available for investment. Stay far away. Vanguard, that's just uh, Jack uh, Bogle is spinning in his grave. Uh, all right, anyway, so they re they opened this fund up a couple years ago. I think it's still open. Uh, and I'm an index type of guy, all right? I like low cost. I, I, I do appreciate the low cost actively managed fund. Wellington, Wellesley, Vanguard Dividend Growth. Uh, the VDIGX closed new investors and is reopening tells me it will close again. I have no clue if it did or not. Uh, so from the Vanguard press release, they talk about that. Turns out this is an amazing fund, exactly what one would expect from Vanguard. $100,000 invested on January 1st, 1993 would have grown to $730,000 basically by 2018. It only had five down years, those 25. So not only did you make a lot of money, but you didn't have that many down years either. In fact, other than 2001, when the fund was down 19%, is less volatile than the S&P 500 as a whole. In 2008, when the S&P 500 was down 37%, VDIGX was only down 25%. Uh, Wellington was down 22 But I'm just, hold on, because there's something interesting here about this. Because now we got the modern data of going into literally as of yesterday. So I thought it would be fun to be do a comparison. So we take VDIGX, VWLELX, as Wellington, and S&P 500, starting in 1993 to 2018. Uh, VDIGX got smoked by all of them. By Wellington beat it. S&P 500 beat it significantly. All right. But then we go to 2000. Again, this is at the end of 2018. So I'm getting you the, the background, and then we're going to hit you up with the last four years. So we started in 2000, VDIGX did better than S&P 500, but worse than Wellington. So VDIGX is number three out of three and number two out of three. So not great. And then we go to 2000, uh, we start in 2008, the down year. Uh, VDIGX did bo better than both Wellington and Wellesley. All right, so VDIGX did better than both. Starting in 2008 to 2000 and, uh, uh, was this, 2008, yeah, right there, 2008, uh, going to 2018. All right, so now we got, so basically it's one, two, and three was the Vanguard Dividend Growth Fund. It was the best in 2008. It was the second best in 2000 to 2018. It was the worst from 1993. All right, now let's take out that crazy 2008, and we go to 2009 to 2018, and Vanguard was number, the dividend growth was number two. All right, so again, S&P 500 did better, of course, because it had more volatility. All right. All right, so let's keep going here. So why I want to I want to go right, I'm going to start now. Updated, 2022. We're going to go to 1993 to the end of 2022. That's 20, 20 years? 30 years, 30 years. This is as of yesterday. VDIGX was worth $1.258 million which was worse than Wellington and worse than S&P 500. Isn't that interesting? What's even more interesting is in 2022, VDIGX was only down 5.8% so far, where Wellington, as of year to date, is down 12.38, and S&P 500 is down 15. All right, so it's, it's interesting. So VDIGX of the three was number three in terms of total return. Interestingly, is VDIGX had an average rate of return better than that of Wellington, even though it had less money in the portfolio. Isn't that interesting? 
So $100,000 invested in VDIGX in 1993 is worth 1.258 with an average rate of return of 9.974. $100,000 invested in Wellington is worth 100,000 more than VDIGX even though it had an average rate of return less. That's where you got you can't look at your average rates of return, you can't. I mean you can, it's fine, but you got to look at a compounding, compa compounded annual growth rate. So now I want to say, what if we took out those years? Because obviously the years from 1993 to 2000 are not great for uh, VDIGX. In fact, we can see uh, right here, 94 is down. Um, 96 is way down relative to these guys. 98, 99, way down relative to the other guys. Yeah, so we had a couple of bad years there. Now let's go to 2000 to 2022. All right, VDIGX is the best. From 2000 to 2022, VDIGX outperformed both the S&P 500 and the Wellington. Isn't that interesting? And significantly outperformed the S&P 500. So those eight years from 93 to 2000 that did the VDIGX in, from 2000 to 2022, significantly did better than the S&P 500 and a little bit better than the Wellington. Again, it's only down 5.87 this year. Isn't that interesting? 2018, it wasn't down, whereas Wellington and well and S and P 500 were down both. So let's go to 2008, a huge market destruction. From 2008 to 2022, VDIGX has smoked Wellington and beaten S and P 500. Even though the S and P 500 is about 60,000, 50,000 more than the S and P 500, even though it's averaging returns. It's only five basis points better. Isn't that weird? So from 2000 to 2022, VDIGX did better. From 2008 to 2022, VDIGX, VDIGX did better. 2009, so we're getting, we're got the negative year of 2008 behind us. I would think S&P 500 did, out, did better, but let's see. Yeah, just barely though. S&P 500 was at 578, whereas VDIGX was at 548. Interesting, is it not? So, <laughs> Wellington was got smoked by either. So, what's the what do we think here? Well, I tell you, you can't just look on the average rates of return. You got to look at the the dollar weighted returns. Let's take a look if we take some money out. Hold on a second. The portfolio visualizer got a hundred thousand bucks. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do VDIGX, you know, and then we're gonna do Wellington. VWELX, Wellington, and then we're going to do uh, VFINX, S&P 500. All right, and then we're going to take 5% a year out each and every year. Uh, cash flows, withdraw, fixed, uh, fixed percentage, fixed percentage, 5% a year. And let's just see what happens. Okay. All right, we're going to reinvest dividends. That looks good. All right, so now, again, starting in 1993, so now we have, we're withdrawing money. And let's see what happened here. It looks pretty close. All right. So, well, actually, I shouldn't say that. Let's see. So here's, well, the VDIGX had $300,000 at the end of November 2020. Is it maybe October 2022? Uh, Wellington at 307, S&P 500 at 367. All right. Interesting. But look at that. S&P 500 had a 64% drawdown. 64% when you factor in a, uh, Drawdown periods from September 2000 to February 2009. I mean, look, it had a, a I mean, it was down 64% at one point when you factor in drawdowns. Isn't that crazy? Awesome. Uh, Wellington is about 40 and VDIGX was 52. None of those are happy. You don't want to be in any of those things. But anyway, either way, so they all held their own. Um, you know, S&P 500 is up a little bit more. Compounded annual growth rate. Here's time-weighted returns, 9.78, 9.12, 8.97. But this is what we want. Compounded annual growth rate is what we're looking for. All right, so let's go to 2000. Because, right, again, the 90s were the uh, bad year for uh, VDIGX compared to the other two. So I would think if we start in 2000, it should be better. We'll see. I don't know. All right, so VDIGX, yeah, it outperformed. From 2000 to 2022, VDIGX outperformed both. Wellington and the S&P 500. I'm not going to say significantly, but uh, you know, it had 60,000 more than the S&P 500 and 15,000, 17,000 more than Wellington. All right, let's go to 2008. 
Again, this is taking 5% a year, each and every year, adjusted for inflation. And I, we're just using whatever the stupid CPI is. Now, 2008, uh, yep, same thing. BDIGX did outperform Wellington uh, and S&P 500. Look at that. Nuts, man. All right, so let's go to 2009. And this is where the dividend model is just, I'm telling you, man, 2009. Uh, VDIGX uh, was within a spit distance of S&P 500. Um, whereas Wellington, yeah, all, well, Wellington's, no, it was $100,000 behind. But anyway, so uh, I tell you, if that doesn't, that, that what that tells you right now is the dividends are back in, on, on, on track, dude. It just seems to me that... Um, the dividend paying stocks are going to be where it's at for the next 10 years. I could 100% be wrong, but if 1990s was big on growth. Uh, 2000s was big on dividend stocks and bonds. 2000 and teens was back to growth. Bonds didn't do anything in 2000 teens. I just think 2020s are going to be like things like now that we're behind the bond market, Wellington, dividend stocks and bonds. I just, you know, I could be wrong, but that's what I'm going. That's what I'm banking on. Yeah, love to your thoughts. We'll see you. Thanks for being here. Oh, don't forget to sign up to my emails on the bottom of this. We get email lists. I blast them out probably once or twice a week or so, but uh, definitely sign up and, uh, and you know, let me know what you got. And don't forget to go to my locals channel as well. Both are in the doobly doo down below. I will right, we'll see you.